Situated high above the ancient city of Corinth, a castle with walls dating back to the 4th century BC, it was besieged by Crusaders, Ottomans, and Venetians, and is the site of the myth of the Pegasus. Hi, this is James from Vistory Victorum. Join us as we visit the castle at Acrocorinth. Acrocorinth, meaning Upper Corinth, is the site of the former Acropolis of the city of Corinth. In the 4th century BC, the castle was conquered by the future king of Macedon, Demetrius, known as Demetrius the Besieger. The castle was later in the hands of the Romans during the conquest of Greece and again refortified by Emperor Justinian in the 6th century AD. It was famous in antiquity for a temple to Aphrodite, which contained a large statue of Aphrodite where she posed holding a shield and viewing herself in the shield's reflection. The castle was known for being well fortified and difficult to capture. The entrance to the castle passes through three sets of walls, each with an imposing gate. After a dry moat here, we are approaching the outermost gate. This saw the most fighting and was rebuilt several times, and now contains Ottoman and Venetian influences. The Ottomans conquered Acrocorinth in 1458, led by Mehmet the Conqueror, who had captured Constantinople and wanted to follow in the footsteps of Julius Caesar and conquer the rest of Europe. After a difficult siege, he managed to breach the outer wall, but he could not breach the two inner walls, which were more well defended. After four months, with food supplies running low, the castle was surrendered. This second gate was partially reconstructed and refortified by the Venetians. The Venetians conquered Acrocorinth in 1687, where some of the fortifications for the castle were in disrepair. Even though they only held the fortress for about 30 years before it was retaken by the Ottomans, they put considerable effort into the repair and renovations of the fortification during this time. This square area on the wall here, right above the door, would have once contained a Venetian lion, similar to this found at nearby Napoleon. This second gate also contains Frankish elements from the Crusaders in the early 13th century. After taking control of Constantinople, the Crusaders turned their sights toward other Byzantine-controlled lands in Greece. A Greek named Leo Skouros, who at the time had control of some of central Greece, had to deal with a superior Crusader force. He took refuge in the safest place he could find, Acrocorinth. Acrocorinth proved very difficult for the Crusaders to conquer. During the siege, they built an additional tower on the mountain here as a base of operations. Skouros held on for three years before it is said he committed suicide by riding his horse off the walls at Acrocorinth rather than be defeated by a Crusader force. The castle actually held out for two more years before it was surrendered in the year 1210. This tower at the very top of the hill here is known as the Frankish Tower and dates from this time. It was constructed by the family of Geoffrey de Vilhadwan, who was a famous chronicler of the Fourth Crusade and participated in this siege. In this inner wall, we can still see the ancient stones from the fortifications back from the 4th century BC. These larger stones were added without mortar and date from that time. They are found throughout this wall but are particularly visible in this tower to the right known as the Classical Tower. It doesn't appear that these large stones on the tower were repositioned or moved. So this gate likely would have been the site of the original entryway into the ancient Acropolis of Corinth. Mm -hmm. 
Inside of the third wall, there are ruins of a town dating from the Ottoman and Venetian period. Acrocorinth was retaken by the Greeks during the Greek Wars of Independence in the 19th century, but the site was largely abandoned at that time. Today the site is scattered with ruins of mosques, fountains, baths, and churches. This rectangular building is the small chapel of St. Demetrius, which is still in use today. It's difficult to date the time of construction, but possibly around the 17th century. This fairly well-preserved mosque dates from the first Ottoman period. It was later used by the Venetians to store ammunition. This tower is a minaret from another mosque that once existed here and was later converted to a church by the Venetians. It sits on top of a flat area of land which is above a cistern for holding water. On the highest peak, there was once a great temple to Aphrodite, which contained a large statue of Aphrodite which we mentioned earlier. One ancient source also mentions courtesans, which made the temple very rich, but it's not certain that they were attached to the temple. This temple was replaced by a Christian church and a mosque. Unfortunately, almost none of these structures remain today, and the stones were likely used to help reinforce the walls and other structures on the site. What still can be visited is an ancient spring called the Upper Pyrene Spring. This kept the castle supplied with water. There are multiple Greek myths about the origin of this spring one of which is of the flying horse known as the Pegasus. Pegasus could create springs out of the ground with its hoof, and one of these was the spring of Pyrene. Using a golden bridle given to him by Athena, Bellerophon tamed the Pegasus there when it stopped to drink from the spring. He then used the Pegasus in his quest to defeat the Chimera, a fire-breathing monster which had parts of a lion, goat, and snake. Thank you for joining History of Victorum. Feel free to check out our other videos as well.